Welcome back to Sports Radio 1290. You're listening to the Kevin and Mike Show. Kev's out today, taking a day off. He'll be back tomorrow. I'm just Iron Mike Luke filling in for him. Let's go straight back. Let's go straight to the phones, though. We have a very special guest on, Sean Malone, to talk about the 88 U of A basketball team in his documentary. Sean, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Mike. Thank you so much for having us on. I we appreciate it. Uh, talk to me a little bit. Obviously, the 88 team, even though it was the 97 team that won the national title, you always get the sense in Arizona, that, especially in Tucson, that the 88 team is still maybe the one that resonates the most. What have you encountered as you've done your research for this uh, documentary about the 88 team? Well, that's absolutely the case. I mean, that team had, you know, Sean Elliott, Steve Kerr, the Gumbies. Um, it was such a fantastic team, and especially for Tucson, which up to that point had not seen a, a Wildcat basketball team, you know, of that caliber. So, you know, this, um, what we've really discovered so far is that people have, like, a very special place in their heart for that team. Um, my brother and I certainly do, and we had a suspicion, you know, other people probably do too, and they'd probably like to see a future film made about this. What's your take on how the importance, obviously everybody knows about how great Sean Elliott was as a player, but how rare was it for a kid like that to, mm. Tucson, not exactly known as a hotbed of high school basketball talent, to literally just kind of pop up on Tucson's west side and kind of become the marquee figure of the Lute Olsen era? Well, it was, you know, if you talk to any of those guys, Kerr, Elliott, or, um, or Lute, you know, they'll say it was a game changer for Arizona because... You know, here you had a McDonald's All-American, uh, one of the best high school players in the country, you know, before coming into Arizona, and not really heavily recruited um, because back then you didn't have the Internet, you didn't have all these, you know, recruiting trails where everybody knew everybody. It was kind of more closed off, and um, Sean saw what was going on at Arizona, and he saw what Lute was doing, and he was like, yeah, I'll play there. Was it a pretty easy sales job for Lute Olson? I think so, yeah. I mean... When we interviewed Sean, he talked about how, you know, he used to go to games when he was a a student at Troy High School. He'd go to the the Wildcat games, and he said the arena would just be empty, you know. Um, But after Luke came in, everything changed, and those teams got better and better, and Sean saw it as a real viable uh, place for him to be. Would you say that he... Was was this the kind of scenario where, with or without Sean Elliott, they were going to get to a certain point, but he really kind of pushed that process forward, really culminating in that 88 team with such a varying degree of personalities and talent? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think the program would have been, you know, very good or great, you know, had that not happened. But I I think Sean just put the whole thing on fast forward. He really gave them a jump start. Um, Prior to that, you know, another big break for Lute was uh, recruiting Craig McMillan, who was uh, another McDonald's All-American. Yeah, Absolutely. What about what about that '88 team? Do you think is a, something you've uncovered that maybe the average U of A fan might not know or might not quite appreciate? Um, you know, when we talked to uh, Kevin O'Neill about that, he he said that that whole year could be summed up in one word: fun. He said, you know, the whole year was fun. Team practices were fun. Team meals were fun. You know, the bus rides were fun, and. Let's face it, it was fun for the fans. I mean, that team is still a fan favorite to this day. How does Steve Kerr, how did he fit into all this? When he came back from that injury, Were did his teammates, did his coaches think that he'd be able to come back and be the player that he was? Or were, was there a lot of hesitation about if, hey, this that might have been it for him? Well, at first they thought it was it for him. In fact, the first doctor who evaluated his injury um, said, uh, you'll you'll never play again. But luckily, you know, Steve got a second opinion, and uh, <laughs> I think we're all thankful yeah. for that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Steve said in retrospect, you know, it was the best thing that could have happened because he was able to mature and grow and come back full force. And in his words, when he came back from that injury, they were stacked. They were a juggernaut. And that everybody remembers kind of his difficult game in that Oklahoma game. But how did it, how did that all transpire? I mean, was this a situation where did he know early on this just wasn't his day and that it was going to kind of have to be Sean that was going to have to carry them? How did how did that because it was just such an un Steve Kerr like performance, especially considering his pro career and all the amazing shots that he hit in crunch time situations? Sure. 
sorry. Yeah, you're talking about that Final Four game? Correct. Um, yeah, I mean, Steve, uh, when we interviewed him, he said, you know, he's been in pro games. He's been in, you know, he's been part of championship teams, five-time NBA championships. Um, you know, he's hit big shots, and that's the one game that he still thinks about and, and just kind of haunts him. You know, he, I think he, he really has some regrets about that game. With, uh, do you think Arizona will ever see in the way college basketball is designed right now? Do you think that Arizona will ever see a player, a talent, a personality like a Sean Elliott? I mean, you you go to see you kids in the park at, on the west side of near Choya still emulate his game, and they have no clue who he was. It's just their parents send giving them hand me down <laughs> stories to him. Yeah. Well, um, hope springs eternal, so let's let's certainly hope so. Um, but, I mean, look at all the great players we've seen in recent years, you know, and look at what Sean's Mill- Sean Miller's doing with the program. Um, I don't know that uh, Arizona fans could could expect or want much more talent than we have. You know, we, we really have a bright future ahead of us. I, yeah, I, I, would cer- I would certainly second that. What about, was this a team, and you mentioned what K.O. said about how everything was fun, was this a team that just had a really good camaraderie with each other, a team that, you know, in their spare time, they were choosing to spend their time with them with each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as a filmmaker, you, you're always kind of looking for conflict because conflict drives story, you know? And, um, as we've asked some of these guys, you know, what are some conflicts you remember from that season or, or more broadly, you know, what are some struggles, you know, from that season that, that maybe we don't know about? And it's funny because they all kind of, they think about it and then they're like, you know, we all just got along. We played for each other. We had a ton of fun. You know, I, they, they just they don't remember any of those things. Not to say there weren't any, but, you know, from their memories, everything about that season was, you know, um, a very, very special time. What did they think? Did they look at themselves as kind of rock stars at that point? Or was that something later on that they realized, hey, man, we were a pretty big deal at that point? <laughs> uh, we, asked, uh, we asked a couple of guys that. We asked Steve that. He kind of laughed it off, said, you know, we don't. We didn't really think of ourselves as, as rock, not rock stars, but, you know, they definitely felt the love. You know, one aspect of that season um, that a lot of fans will remember is, you know, people used to go to the airport and greet the team and, you know, cheer them on uh, after road road trips. And, you know, of course, after they came back from the Final Four, the, the same thing. And then there was a parade for them. And then, you know, a huge crowd of 30,000 people at Arizona Stadium to, to greet them after losing in the Final Four just to say, you know, thank you. This this season will go down in history. What got you guys interested in making this uh, this documentary? Was there any? Was there a moment? Was there just kind of a culmination of things? What really got? What really led you down that direction? Well, I mean, we always knew it was a good story because I mean, we grew up in Tucson, and it was really the formative sports story of our childhoods. Um, but as far as you know, driving the film forward, my brother, he's one of the my brother Brad. Um, He's one of the most expert U of, U of A uh, basketball fans you're going to find. And, you know, he knows so much about the program's history. And this has been a passion project for him for, for really like over five years. And I came on a couple of years ago because I have a filmmaking background. And um, I said, you know, let's fast track this. When, when, can we, uh, when can we expect some more movement on the documentary? Is there anything to announce? Yeah, so today we... Um, Unveiled our trailer exclusively on Twitter, so you can find us at at uh, wildabout88, and we're also at Facebook. Throw that throw that one out there again for the listeners. Sure, at wildabout88, um, and uh, we so we unleashed the trailer today. Um, we're still in production, which means we're still filming interviews. But um, best case scenario, I'd say in about a year, um, we should uh, we should have what we need. Okay. Sean, we can't thank you enough for your time, buddy, and we'd love to get you on as that uh, project comes closer to completion. You're welcome to come on anytime. Thank you, and if I just may say, you know, uh, wildabout88.com or uh, Twitter or Facebook, wildabout88. Absolutely. We appreciate it again, man. We'll definitely be in touch. You're the best. Thanks, Mike. Okay, thanks again. Come back with us on the other side. You're listening to the Kevin and Mike Show on Sports Radio 1290.